This is our 1999 Mitsubishi Montero, and this car has been sitting in this same spot for over five months, but the car won't start. A car needs power, fuel, and air. We're getting power, and we have air, but we don't have fuel, which is strange because I put about five gallons of gas into the gas tank on this car before I parked it. I parked it and then I let it sit. I think the gas might have gone bad, which would explain why the car won't start and it smells like acetone whenever you try doing so. We're gonna pop the hood because we're gonna use the fuel pump to our advantage and that's gonna be doing all the work for us. Now, I really hope there's no yellow jackets whenever we lift this hood. So we're going to proceed with caution. Any surprises in here? Nope, just a bunch of leaves. I accidentally caused a slight problem that we need to take care of because it's gonna keep us from starting this car. I accidentally set off the security alarm on the car. I didn't realize it was locked. So whenever we opened the rear door, the alarm was going off. And while that may not seem like that big of a problem, it's actually gonna keep us from starting the car because whenever the security alarm goes off, it kills the ignition and no matter what you do, it's not gonna start. So we're gonna use a quick little like uh, refresh or reboot on the system of the car and we should be good to go. And I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride. So if it happens to you, at least you know what to do. We'll need to disconnect the battery before we can begin. It'll essentially trick the car into thinking nothing's happening. I forgot that I actually took this battery out of this car to put in our 65 Chevy because I didn't have a spare battery on hand. Now the car's disconnected from the battery. We need to take ourselves to the inside of the car. We're gonna take the key and put it in the ignition. We're gonna turn it to the full on position just before you start it. I'm gonna close the door and now we reconnect the battery. We're gonna move on to disconnecting the fuel line. It's the only one in the engine bay that has this rubbery cover on it. It's also very distinct because it's brown. Every single thing in here is either silver or black. So to disconnect it, we're just gonna loosen these two nuts here, and that's gonna be a 14. I need to go find a 19 wrench. We got ourselves a 19 size wrench. This is really tough. We're gonna remove the fuel line hose. So whenever we put the key in the start position on the car, fuel should start coming out of here. It is in the on position, nothing is happening. With the fuel not coming out of the fuel line, this can mean one of two things. We either one, got a bad fuel pump, which would be unfortunate because I didn't want to drop the fuel tank. That's the whole reason why we're doing this. We could start the car, or at least try to start the car. If the fuel pump is good, fuel will come out of the fuel line. So if fuel does come out of here, it could just be a relay issue of some sort. Not really a clogged line because if fuel comes out, then the line's not clogged. So we're gonna start the car, or at least attempt to. It seems like our fuel pump has gone bad. Thanks to a viewer, we don't have to drop the tank to get the fuel pump out. They sent me a message on Instagram saying they were able to get the fuel pump out through the access door on the floor of the trunk. The access door that they're referring to is in the cargo area of the car. It's just behind the back seats. There's gonna be six bolts in a circle that hold this axle panel to the cargo floor and they're gonna be a size 12. The fuel pump is actually located on the front side of the gas tank and it's right there. It's covered in varnish and kind of like this weird white stuff. I don't know exactly what it is, um, but it's white. We could go ahead and just buy a replacement fuel pump assembly for about 50 bucks, give or take, but that's a total reproduction and you can't always guarantee the quality of the part. Yes, it comes with a warranty, but do you really want to go through the process of having to pull it out again and replace it if it goes bad? I don't really want to do that. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna rebuild our factory fuel pump assembly. Now we're just gonna do this by taking out the old fuel pump and the strainer, cleaning it up and replacing it with a new one. Now the new fuel pump with the strainer cost me $64.98, which is about $20 more than buying a full reproduction fuel pump assembly. However, I don't wanna mess around with something that's not gonna fit or hold up over time. If you're planning on rebuilding your fuel pump assembly like I did in this video, I will put some stuff in the description for everything that I used. Now these are good quality parts, on a budget. Nothing really cheap and no knockoffs because we want something that's reliable and that's gonna last. There's a little bit less than five gallons of bad fuel in this tank and we're using a pump to get as much of it out as possible so that we lower our possibility of clogging the new fuel pump whenever we try running this car. 
It's time to install the fuel pump assembly back into the car and we just got to make sure we secure all the hoses and the electrical connections back to where they're supposed to be. And we need to tighten down all the nuts that go around the fuel pump assembly that holds it into place, making sure that we have a good seal between the gas tank and the fuel pump assembly. After replacing the fuel pump, the car started right up and that explains why it's right here instead of parked in the grass underneath the tree where it sat for the last six months. But we're not done quite yet because we need to finish off by replacing the fuel filter. This will ensure that we have a clean new system on the car. And if you wanna be extra safe, put some glasses on. You'll definitely be having a really terrible day if you get some rust in your eyes. Ugh. There's only gonna be four tools we're gonna to need for this whole job and they're all wrenches. We're gonna to need a size 10, 12, 14 and 19. Lucky for us, the stock height of this vehicle is just tall enough for us to squeeze underneath. The fuel filter is gonna be located in the center of the car. It's kind of next to the drive shaft. Depending on where your vehicle came from, you may need to put some penetrating lubricant on those bolts to make sure they come off. Whether the vehicle's been sitting or not, you're going to have fuel in the lines. And that's why whenever we're disconnecting the lines from the fuel filter, you can see it starting to leak. Now I'm disconnecting them gradually so it doesn't make a huge mess, but the line that's gonna leak the most is gonna be the top one. And this is gonna connect to your fuel tank. Now we did just pump out as much fuel as we possibly could, so there shouldn't be as big of a mess. But to keep myself from getting super wet, and pulling on the concrete, I decided to use a wrench and prop it up against one of the bolts that hold the fuel filter to the frame of the car. But just in the meantime, while I get the new fuel filter ready. It's important to note that with the new fuel filter kit, it includes two washers. Now these two washers are gonna go on top of a bolt that connect to the top of the fuel line. One goes on the bolt first, you put it through the fuel line, and then the other one goes on the other side of that bolt, like a cookie. Now we'll wanna make sure that we tighten these bolts down as tight as possible, but not too tight, because we don't wanna break them off. But we also don't wanna leak, because then that could potentially start a fire, or, well, you'll just be wondering what happened to all your gas. All it took was replacing those two components and now our Montero is ready for the road. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like and subscribe button. But guys, until next time, I will see you later. Have an amazing day.